Challenges are part of life, but for women in sports, they're even greater. With more attention being brought to women in sports this year than ever before, we're going to dive into some of the reasons why it's been an uphill battle. There's a way in which social dynamics have privileged male sport. And that's something that is kind of, again, woven into then sports coverage and the ways that things are modeled. We'll be gaining insight from feminist media scholar Dr. Lieberman, as well as Emily Brokater, the student assistant to hockey operations, and Mary Wilson, one of our very own female basketball players, in order to further this conversation. We are accustomed to and socialized to thinking about the ways that men's sports yields more competition and drama and uh, athleticism. And so I think that that idea needs to be disrupted. So. How do we disrupt the idea that men's sports are better than female ones? And how can we support females in this arena? There's a way in which you have to have um, decision makers with the intentions to foster that visibility. And so it becomes really important at the hiring level, at the mentorship level, um, creating more spaces for women to know that there are these opportunities so that it even starts at college or even beforehand. I definitely want to be like a role model for other little girls right now that are like oh that looks cool but are defeated if it doesn't look like they even have the opportunity to so i'm more excited that there's opportunity on the horizon the visibility uh is is key to just normalizing women in these spaces right so the more you see it then that becomes inspirational to younger women who are thinking oh well I could be this when I grow up for example. Depending on where you sit in the industry the idea of change is pinpointed at a different place so bringing visibility to all of these people in all of these positions is where the difficulty lies. Women are almost three times more likely to leave their job when they don't feel heard so whether you're on the court in the stands or in the office, advocating for change is essential. When talking about adversity like this, these barriers to change were mentioned. You hear female athletes, or you know, athletes who identify as women and femmes in, in the space, there is, there's always this way in which you have to fight against the meanings that are thrust upon your body. Like you're already, okay, you're a female athlete, or your sexuality is in question your uh, strength is in, is in question, should you be in this space? So there is an adversity that is always in flux, that you always kind of contended with on top of trying to master the sport. Basketball was one of the places that I noticed there was a difference. And, you know, when I would step on the court, even though I knew I was better than all the boys out there, it was at first I would have to prove myself and be like, well, I'm actually better than all of you and I can show you guys up and um, I can hoop. and. I think that that kind of made me really be drawn to basketball because I felt like that was an area that I could really put work into and um, had that competitive spirit where I could really thrive in and definitely noticed it. I would say I have, haven't had it too terribly, but more so it's motivated me to be a better athlete. With all these barriers, how can we actually facilitate change in the industry? So again, who we have at the institutional level is important. Not just women, but anyone with an interest in furthering women's sport. Calling out some of the inequities while also highlighting the wins and the positives is, a, is, is often a really effective approach. With conversations around salary, NIL deals, and the growth of women's sports in the past year, I wanted to know where these women think that the industry will be in the next 10 years. Just the past like two years or so, it's been incredible to see the growth that it's made with um, you know, Caitlin Clark was one of those, but there's many other great players that have kind of led the way to where it is now, especially with the NL ideal. So with that continuing to get up there and also social media is just so prominent in our lives, I think it could be a point where it's more popular than men's basketball, in my opinion, and that's nothing against the men's game, like, you know, all respect to them, but I think women just have a really niche area with, like, sports and they're so creative and yeah, I think the sky's the limit with it. So I'm really excited to see where it can go. Focusing in on your journey and just doing it because you love it. Cause if you don't love it, then, then there's no point. So I would say all in all, don't get so caught up in the outside noise and just 
do you and have fun and just try and get better every day. To all the other women out there who think that they don't have what it takes, you definitely do. Women are strong, resilient, and determined to advocate for a better future full of opportunities for young girls. And this conversation is just the beginning. This is Charlotte Monroe reporting for DU Media.